Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. Are you ready for new stories? I have five today. Let's go to the first one. Enjoy the stories, guys, and don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, don't forget to leave a comment. Here's the thing. My mother found out that she was pregnant a few weeks after she broke up with my dad. My dad started Tina after the breakup. My mom died when I was two. I don't remember her at all. My dad went on to marry Tina, and they had one child, Angela. I love Tina and Angela, and they love me. I consider Tina to be my mom, and she loves me as much as my stepsister. My mother's family lives in another country, and I fly out to them once a year and spend a month there with them. For some reason, they hated my dad and Tina, and were indifferent towards Ange. They flew me out at their own expense. My dad and Tina don't have any family. My dad was in foster care, and Tina cut off her toxic family and ran away when she was 16. It has always been just us four and some friends. That's it. I get the big family experience every year with my mom's family. They are too nice. They shower me with love and affection. They also send me a lot of gifts when I return. Recently, Ange has been jealous of my relationship with them and asked me if she could come along with me the next time I go. She told me that she too wanted to experience some familial love, like grandparents' affection, uncle, aunt, pampering, etc. I tried talking to my grandma about it, and she just shut me down. Turns out, when I was two, Tina proposed an idea to my mom's family. Tina would raise me like her own and will not have any kids with my dad if my mom's family would leave them alone and I would be told that Tina is my bio mom. They disagreed, and apparently, Dad went no contact with them for more than a year. Only when they were threatened with court, Tina and my dad dropped the plan. Everyone are adamant about not wanting to know Ange. My parents are expecting me to give them an ultimatum about accepting Ange. I, however, don't want to. Ange is heartbroken and cries constantly over this. When I tried to tell her that I cannot force them to accept her because they aren't related, she asked me if it would be okay if Tina didn't love me, as she isn't related to me either. Now, everyone in the house has told me that they are disappointed in me and are giving me the silent treatment. It's not like I want to hurt Ange, and I know that she is asking from a good place. Am I really the a-hole here? Not the a-hole. The silent treatment is emotional abuse. OP's dad, Tina, and Angela are emotionally abusing OP because her mom's family doesn't want her to come on their trip. With good reason, too, after what Tina and OP's dad proposed. It's very likely that OP's dad was cheating and or somehow involved with Tina while he was still with OP's mom. Tina wanted to basically take OP away from her mom's family and make them and OP's mom disappear. That was so wrong and I can understand why OP's mom's family doesn't want to have anything to do with Tina, Angela. I'm sorry Angela doesn't have the familial love she apparently craves, but that is not OP's fault. So I, 22 female, am engaged to my lovely fiance, 23 male, who I've been with for the past three years. We were friends since kindergarten, but I moved out of the state for a few years when I was a child and came back to my hometown when I was 15. Then, I reconnected with him, and we've been friends since, and later started dating. The rest is history. So, for the time I was away, of course, my fiancé had made new friends. He grew particularly close to that girl. Let's name her Lily, 22 female. They'd visit each other's houses a lot while they were teens. Their families would get along and so on. My mother-in-law and brother-in-law thought my fiancé and Lily were dating, but they were just friends. Lily is also the twin sister of my fiancé's best friend, which makes things more complicated. Long story short, Lily and my fiancé were being shipped by my in-laws. Then I came back, got very close with my fiancé, and once we started dating, my in-laws accepted me with open arms, but they'd always make sure to drop Lily's name and remarks about her possibly dating my fiancé at some point. I brushed it off at first, until Lily started making jealousy scenes towards my fiancé, demanding to have exclusive treatment over me. She even tried to claim I cheated on my fiancé because she saw me with a guy on the street. That guy was my 17-year-old brother. I was 21 at the time. 
My fiancé had had enough of her, and went no contact with her, and her brother got mad at my fiancé and cut him off too for a few months, but later reconciled, and now they're besties again, without his sis being involved. My in-laws didn't take the news of my fiancé going no contact with Lily very well. They tried to guilt trip my fiancé into reconciling with her multiple times, telling him he's wrong for throwing their friendship in the trash, etc. We later found out that my in-laws still have secret meetings with Lily and my fiancé got pissed at them. They claimed Lily had done nothing wrong and we should give her another chance, that she's got no bad intentions. They essentially also blame me for trying to ruin their friendship and ruining my fiancé's and his best friend's friendship in the process. They claim we're overreacting about it and how it's not as serious as we presented it to be. They also said that even if Lily hurt my fiancé, they love her and they don't want her to feel bad, and they'd rather have my fiancé feel uncomfortable with their interactions and friendships rather than have bad blood with Lily. They also tried to be civilized with me, trying to explain their point of view, but while doing that they admitted that they wish Lily was in my place, but they still love me a lot. We're now both about to go no contact with them and cut the toxicity and manipulation out of our lives. But how do we approach this without feeling like we're the ones in the wrong? OP should just do the slow fade out of their lives. No reason to burn any bridges. OP should quit initiating contact and only talk to them when they initiate. She should put the in-laws on an information diet and not tell them anything about their lives. OP should look up Grey Rock and use that tactic when she talks to them. Basically, OP's objective is to be as boring as possible when she does have contact with them. If they mention Lily, OP should not respond or cut contact. Pretty soon, they will just quit calling. It sucks that they chose Lily over a relationship with their son, but they will never learn their lesson if their bad behavior doesn't have consequences. I was married for 13 years. My ex-wife and I divorced three years ago. I thought we were solid in our marriage and had a great and trusting relationship, yet, as I found out, wrong. She had been carrying on a relationship with another man for three years. It appeared her boyfriend had ended it, and to be honest, I do remember her being particularly sad and upset the weeks following the approximate time the affair had ended. It had gotten really intense to the point they were fantasizing about running away with each other. He's not with anyone else. I had to find out about their relationship in the most embarrassing way, stumbling across emails saved on a USB in a jar in our attic. And the emails were filled with the most disgusting things and descriptions of what they did to each other, in our bedroom being the worst of it all. I couldn't get over it. She seemed somewhat remorseful during the time I was readying divorce papers to be served. But after that, it seems her true face showed and she turned into a vindictive, hateful person, bragging about her escapades with her ex-boyfriend to spite me and saying how inferior I am to him. How happy was I to get out of that situation those years ago? Since we have two preschool sons and a toddler daughter we share custody over, they're biologically mine. I would play happy parents with her and she'd constantly make references to her love life being dry. She'd also make overtures about getting back together. I always did my best to shut that down. Until one day last week when I was helping with the kids at her place and my ex-mother-in-law was there. I must have been particularly down that day because she immediately commented on the grief on my face. She apologizes for what she's about to say, but then says, Women are sexual beings too, you know, and they do lust after other men. Out of the blue. I looked confused, and she continues to say that she's deeply sorry her daughter hurt me, but communication could have saved her daughter and I, and that there's a chance we could reignite our love again. Oh, brother. I get really pissed off when she says that. I tell her that any love I had for her deceitful POS daughter left when I went through what I did with her in our divorce, and that while I respect her as a person, I wouldn't wish a life with her on my worst enemy. I then ask my ex-mother-in-law if she herself had betrayed her husband. And before she could answer, I say that I don't care because I don't value the life story of narcissists. I then said, Lord bless her husband for putting up with the two of them, my ex and his wife. My ex-mother-in-law instantly shut up at that and avoided me the rest of that week. 
Apparently, I was too harsh. My ex confronted me about my words and how they deeply upset her mother. She said she couldn't believe she was married to someone like me. I really couldn't give two hoots about her opinion, but I just couldn't tolerate anyone talking about our divorce like that. Was I not harsh enough, or am I the a-hole? Not an a-hole. The whole implication she had anyways was that it was OP's fault. OP's fault she got with someone else behind OP's back, and OP's fault they divorced. She acted like OP is just dumb. OP doesn't deserve that. Having a mistress, or several, is a very common thing in my husband's family. So, there are a lot of illegitimate children running around. However, the difference between how the legitimate children are treated compared to the illegitimate children is like night and day, unless the child is lucky and the wife wants to raise them. My husband's half-sister is an example of one of the lucky ones. Even though she was raised in the same house as my husband, he was treated far better than her because of their father. The only reason she was raised by my mother-in-law was because she had always wanted more children but couldn't have any of her own. My sister-in-law's biological mother never wanted to give her up, but they made her using money and threats. When I first found out I was pregnant and he told me I could either marry him or give him the baby, I felt like I had no other option, especially when my sister-in-law told me he was being 100% serious. It also didn't help that my sister-in-law knew exactly who he would marry if I refused, and I definitely didn't want that woman to be my son's stepmother. Recently, my husband's cousin brought up our wedding because she wants to marry her boyfriend of four months and her family are telling her not to. She was using us as an example of marriages being successful after only dating for a short time when you know it's true love. Honestly, nobody is going to be surprised to hear that my marriage is far from a success, at least not currently. But my husband doesn't like anyone knowing about his private business, so no one in his family even suspects a thing. At one point, she tried to get me to back her up, but I just couldn't. So I said honestly that I had married my husband because I didn't want my son to grow up like my sister-in-law did, and that it was never about true love. Now I have several different people angry at me for different reasons. My in-laws for making them seem like they treated my sister-in-law badly. My husband for sharing his private business and making him look like a bad husband. And the cousin because now everyone is doubling down on her even more. Am I the a-hole? OP should not have married into that family and could have fought for her kid. Why would she need to give her husband the baby? She should have taken that kid and run far, far away, never looking back. Now she is stuck with them, and so is her kid. And because of her, her baby is going to grow up in that horribly toxic environment. We all know her husband is going to cheat anyway, because that's what the family does. And OP's kid is going to have to deal with that now. Should have run when she could. I have a two-year-old son with my ex fiance until recently, he wasn't involved in his life because he had no idea he existed. When I found out I was pregnant, my ex wasn't happy, and he told me to have an A. We kept fighting over it until one day I was bleeding and having very bad cramps. My ex wanted to take me to the hospital since we both thought I was miscarrying, but I refused to go with him. In the end, I did go by myself because the pain got so bad. While at the hospital, I found out I had been pregnant with twins and that I had lost one, but the other had survived. When my ex came to see me, I asked him if he was happy that our baby had died, and he told me that while he was sorry that I was hurting, he had never wanted the baby or to be a father, so yes, he was relieved that the baby was gone. I made up my mind there and then that I had to pick between the baby or him, and I chose the baby. I broke up with him and completely disappeared from his life as soon as I could. Fast forward a few months ago, and my sister told him about our son because she thought it wasn't fair that I was struggling when he could easily help. It has honestly been a weird few months. At first, my ex only wanted to be financially involved, but then I had to bring my son with me to one of the meetings with him and his lawyer because my childcare bailed last minute, and meeting him made my ex change his mind. I ended up moving back to the city he lives in because he was insistent and I didn't have many other options but to agree, especially since he was paying for arranging everything. 
One bonus is that this is the same city my family and most of my friends live in, so it's nice to be back. The majority of my friends had no idea that I have a son, since my ex's sister is in the same friendship group, and I didn't want it getting back to her, her brother. They knew I had moved back though, and invited me out one night to celebrate. My parents agreed to watch my son for me, so I went. My friends were asking me how come I moved back, and I told them it was because my ex asked me to so that he could be closer to our son. His sister didn't say a word about not knowing or give me any indication that she hadn't known. She just told me she was happy I was back and asked me when she could meet her nephew. The next day, I got an angry call from my ex asking me why I had told his family about our son without talking to him first, since he hadn't spoken to them about it yet. According to him, they now think that he lied about me miscarrying and they all assume he had sent me away so he wouldn't have to deal with a baby he never wanted. Am I the a-hole? Not an a-hole. That's on him for not talking to his family sooner. It's not like OP specifically went out of her way to tell her. OP's friends asked why she moved back, and she told them the truth. It also says a lot about him that his family assumes the worst of him without knowing the full story. OP should be careful and make sure she is protecting herself and her little one. So, my family is pretty screwed up. My parents had a disastrous marriage, and there was a lot of cheating. When I was nine, my dad met Amber, and the guy who had a hard time saying I love you somehow fell madly in love, filed for divorce, and moved in with Amber all within four months, which, to me, screams affair. This woman was truly awful. My brother and I used to duck with her, but she would make it seem so much worse and cry to my dad. I witnessed her forcing herself to cry before he came into the room. Well, Amber claimed we cut her hair while she was sleeping, and that was kind of my dad's out to parenting. He saw us every once in a while, but we were banned from his house. The best part is her hair was cut perfectly even. Well, at some point, Amber got therapy for her ducked up childhood and confessed what she did to my dad. It was really weird because he didn't seem that mad, but he made her apologize. That was 10 years ago, and she's literally my best friend now. She's still sort of a narcissist and an unrepentant homewrecker, but she's hilarious, and I get why my dad loves her. Amber turned 40 recently, and I got her scissors. I got her a nicer gift too, but I told her the scissors were for when my dad tried to leave her for a younger woman, so she could manipulate him into staying. Amber laughed. My half-sister did not. She started crying about how terrible the family is, and my dad told me to apologize. He's a lazy parent and will do anything to shut her up. I refused because Amber was not offended, and I might have said, this is why your mom likes me more. So, am I the a-hole? Yes, an a-hole. I hope OP's family has loads of money for all the therapy they need later in life. OP's stepmom needs to realize that she should be a parent figure rather than being a friend and enforce appropriate boundaries.